TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador, and Marvin Goof, yo. And we're here to talk nerdy to you, as we have been for the last 13 years talking about comics, video games, movies, shows, all the nerd stuff, because we want to save you the time. We don't want you to waste your time. We want you to put your time into the best of the best. So we're willing to waste our time so you don't have to. So we're going to be covering Invincible Season 2. Let's move on to Invincible Season 2 Part 2 which I have to grab my little, it feels like a manual. It's this giant book right here, Invincible Ultimate Collection, Volume 4, which was my my Bible for this season, so to speak, which is... I lost. I lost? Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. I read it after. I really wish I would have read it before the season because then I would have known what was coming and what was happening, but I didn't because I didn't know what was going to happen. So I didn't also I don't want to like go too far as well. But this covers pretty much everything that is in the season two part two right here. So this is the one that you want to get if you want to have that. And oh, it's so good. Like it. That's this show is so good because it follows the book so closely. And anything that they don't, they either change for the better, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're like, oh, that's funny that they turned this into a joke in the show when it was kind of like a thing they mentioned in the book, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was, yeah, it was, it was really great. We talked a little bit about, a little bit about it in the previous Talk Nerdy to Me that we did, which was, so check that one out where we talked about that, which like the Starro or Starmie or, mm -hmm. or not Starmie, but the Starro thing. The way that that ends, even, we're going to get more of that. Like, there's going to be yeah. more. Mm -hmm. And it might be, like, world, planet, takeover type thing. We'll see. I don't know. Because I haven't read that far. I need to get the Volume 5 before the Season 3 comes out. But the cool part is the father might be coming back in to change things up. And change mm -hmm. the dynamics. Because uh, his buddy, who... Uh, was trying to talk to them at first until he realized he went to the wrong planet and realized the Viltrumite Empire had already claimed there. He was trying to get uh, the main character to go uh, back with them so they could fight the Viltrumites because they were like, hey, a son of a Viltrumite is rebelling against the Viltrumites. He could help us in our battle for the Viltrumites. So that didn't work out. And then he found out more about what happened to his father. He's like, Let's let's find out where his father is, and maybe we can have his father help us. <laughs> Since his father is not 100% compliant with them, so he may be able to sway in who he's going to help. Right, and, and his dad tells him, he. I mean, we saw in this in the previous season, he said, Mark, read my books. And essentially, they are manuals to how to defeat the Viltrumites. They're fictional stories but there's stories that he was on adventures on where he fought aliens and he fought people that were able to hurt him. Like, so there's these weapons that they can use against in these techniques or whatever to use against Viltrumites. And so that's what Mark gives mm. to Alan, the alien, right? That's his name. Yeah. And who's, who's voiced by Seth Rogen. And he's just like, so is like, his voice is just... Now, I can't, like, read it without hearing his voice and hearing their voices because their voice, the voicing is so perfect that I'm like, now that's what I hear. It's kind of like when you watch X-Men, you're like, those are the voices I hear when I read the books now. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just like that with this, too. And it's so great. So, yeah, you see they're slowly building, like, these alliances, but then also they get knocked down. Like, there's that lady that shows up and she's she threatens his girlfriend oh wow and she's like i will pop her head like a pimple if you do not come with me and you're like oh my god wow okay yeah. and then they have a little chat but then they have to go they go and he has this he has to fight this kaiju and and that also is a test like is she gonna help him is she not gonna help him because she's like oh yeah the viltrumites are here to help like we're trying to improve people's civilizations and stuff don't run we are your friends <laughs> And so it's her trying to kind of convince him of that. The books are slightly different. You can tell that she's more, 
I, I don't know. It's just, it's different, and, and I've heard that they're like, how they're going to traverse this in the future is going to be weird because of what happens in the books, but I think they've already changed, like, her character enough and, like, her trajectory that it won't be an issue when they get to it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was, it, that was really crazy, and that was really interesting, and like you said, you have Alan, and he's, like, infiltrating that prison so that he can talk to Mark's dad, Omni-Man, and be like, hey... Like, you need to get it together so that we can start this, like, revolution, sort of. And then all the while, the other son, the, the purple, like, um, insectoid son is growing super fast. That's the thing is that in the book, they reveal more than they have in the show. And mm. that makes me so jacked for the next season because I'm like, oh, my God, yes. And then even there's the personal stuff, right? Where, like, Mark is saying, what am I, what am I doing wasting time in college? Like, I have these abilities... And we have a legit threat that's coming, like, within five years or less, mm -hmm. right, of the, where these Viltrumites are going to show up on our doorstep and we're going to have an all-out war. And am I going to be ready? Are we going to be ready? Mm -hmm. And how can I be ready and we be ready if I'm doing school all the while he can help take care of his brother and do all these other things, you know, and, and do more supering and improving himself and getting stronger instead of wasting time with school, which also affects his personal relationship with his girlfriend, all that stuff. Yeah. And then re goes to his other relationship that he's had since the beginning, which is uh, Eve. Eve, and then uh, I think the more interesting one is probably Rex. Oh, yeah. Um, because he's like, he was just a bumpish douchebag. Uh-huh. Uh, but he's starting to kind of catch on and know where things really need to be. Like, he, he knows he doesn't have a shot with Eve, so he doesn't even try, but mm -hmm. he's still very helpful with for her. And he's also realized that he needs to help Mark out, too, because it's like, well, if I don't help Mark out, we might all die. Right. So I'm going to do it in the best way that I can. Right. Even that was, like, super crazy intense because... So there was that alien invasion, and then the, what was like the Snake Squadron or whatever it was, yeah. which also, once again, a ripoff of the one from Marvel, and that was crazy how that happened, and then he got messed up, but then he kind of got improvement, so now he's, because I thought he was, like you said, he's making, he's, he's improving as a character, but also like his abilities, his powers are leveling up too, because... Now he has, like, actual blasts he can shoot. Like, before he used to just chuck, like, these little sticks and these little things and stuff. And it was cheesy and stupid. Now I'm like, okay, now he's kind of hardcore. He's, like, also kind of like an android, sort of, you know. Mm. But it, it is pretty cool. And it's pretty crazy. And the other part is that, what's his name? Angstrom Levy, who they set up early in, the in I think it was part one of season two yeah. and then in this one where it comes to fruition where he finally he attacks his his mom and mark's mom and and the brother and then so mark just goes off the handle and this guy's talking himself up i'm so powerful blah blah, blah. and he just demolishes him mm. and it's crazy because i feel like there is you can relate to that and anyone and anyone who's ever really like gotten into a fight whether it's, like, with their siblings or in real life or whatever, or, like, or in any situation where you've taken it too far, even if it's just verbally, you go, like, oh, man, I, I took it way too far, and, and you see, like, how it messes him up. But it it's also kind of needed for his character because he needs to get to that point mentally of, if you don't do this with the Viltrumites, we are going to lose. Earth will lose. They He will lose. They, his family's everyone, right? So I think that's just part of slowly getting him there. And so it, it was, there was some really powerful stuff in this, and I can't wait to see more based off the stuff that I've read and then what's to come. So i got to get Volume 5 and read that before the next season comes out because I don't want to be, like, unprepared this time because it's, it's, it's more, I mean, it is more intense. Yeah, or, or the Asian guy feeling finding out who he really is right that was crazy too yeah that he's been like remade so many times just like that other uh kid that was taken by that that evil minion which that's i don't know if they're going to reveal that in the show too because they they did it different in the comics which is that guy hired him to work for them to make essentially like those robots like a make a robot army for them to fight the viltrum right so i don't know mm -hmm. if they're going to reveal that in the show or not because I don't think they've really hinted at it at all. Yeah. So it might be a big reveal surprise. Spoiler alert. 
But it's out there if you read if you read the books. But you'll forget by the time that comes, so don't worry about it. I'll um, probably forget it. I mean, I still haven't caught up to all of this. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's phenomenal. Still seems like it's I know we spoiled well. a lot, and I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I got overexcited. My bad. But it's been such a good season. I just feel like I had to talk about it because it was kind of traumatic. So you're kind of like my my trauma buddies now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it was it's so good, and 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 yeah, can't wait for some more. And and I think I've already heard that. The next season's finished as far as the voice work. Yeah. So now, but hopefully that means that the animation won't take too long. You, I thought that they did animation first and then voice work. So there's, no, yeah. but it no. kind of depends on like I think that's more Japanese animation, right? No, Japanese a lot of times will do voice work first as oh, well. Oh, okay. It's just uh, when they translate it, when they bring it over, then the voice work has to. Then go they have to change the writing a little bit, and then the voice work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's but like confused. the animation is always going to be based off of what the lines are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there which there's some funny stuff in there too, where he's like, "Yeah, we do some stuff with it because he went to a convention and he's talking about like the tricks that they use." They're like, "Yeah, yeah, sometimes we just put a panel, you know, and nothing's really moving. You just there's a lot of people, and we just have, but we have the the screen moving, so you think it's moving, you know, or you see the back of someone's head. That's because." We forgot to put in some dialogue, and so we added it, and then they do that same thing for that shot. Yeah. And I'm like, this, so, this show is so funny how it makes... And that's how the book is, too, where it's constantly making fun of... It's constantly making fun of comics and superhero comics and, and wow. making fun of the genre and everything like that. So it's kind of... It's not quite like Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, but it is like... it's It doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's what I love about it, too. So, yeah, for me, it's definitely a must-see, must-stream. Yeah, it's a must-see, must-stream for me as well. Catch up on it if you like me. What yeah, are we you doing have here? to. Yeah. What, what am I doing here? I'm gonna do, yeah. We're going to need to give you a tablet over there. So, you just like. <laughs> so we have our merch that we're sporting. Uh, I have the Fallout stuff, which might be going away off the site after this month because we're going to be reducing our site to only 100 products. So this is probably going to be going away because this is merch of the month. After that, it's, it might be going away completely. I mean, if you still want it, we'll we'll find a way to get it to you. We can make that happen, but it's not going to be on sale because this is the only time that it's going to be on sale with free shipping. By Grabthar's hammer. What a saving. Uh, which is the, it's the vats, and then it says, so you're telling me there's a chance, like from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> from that meme. Uh, so I love it, and there's all kinds of shirts. This is the tank top, and this is a small, which works for me. And then I also have the X-Men hoodie, uh, which I love, and, and it's so great. It's not too heavy. Um, this is a medium, and uh, it, fits, it fits pretty good. Um, and then, of course, I have, the, I have these Ninja Turtle shorts, and then I got my, um, my Mortal Kombat socks, which I don't even know if we're going to... We're probably going to get rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. Like I said, we have to reduce our store a lot, so it's it's a lot of this stuff is going away. But if you want it, hit us up for it, and we'll I'll, I'll even hook people up with codes if they if they want. Just like discount just codes. message us. But yeah, just message let us. Let us know, and we can we can find a way to make it available for you to purchase it. Yeah, it's yeah. not a problem at all. I'm rocking my uh, Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles shirt. Probably one of our best shirts we have here. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, that is Star Trek font right there. And I adore it. It makes me happy. Yes, so, and we have other ones. <laughs> I have, there's another one that says live long and prosper. There's also another one that has the uh, Spock quote that he says to, uh, to Kirk when he's dying. Um, so, uh, yeah. But I almost felt like maybe we should have gotten him the, the shirt or be like, you know what, you guys switch shirts. You know, like, because this guy's spitting the, but this is the ambassador. That's why he, he has the nerd knowledge. That's why we call him the ambassador. My so, parents are Trekkies. He's so, he knows this stuff. So, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's how I know. My parents are Trekkies. So you just have to know that kind of stuff. Growing up in a Trekkie household. Mm. So, but yeah, uh, and once again, you know, we're going to do the shout-outs. Shout-outs always to Atticus as our number one shout-out. And then uh, we have Amerame Media, as well as others. M M uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde makes uh, comics. They're phenomenal. I love their inspirational posts. 
And uh, yeah, we have uh, we have. Don't we have another one that? Oh yeah, uh, we're still working on getting a collaboration with them. But the horror fiend. I was talking to one of the main guys that runs it, and uh, yeah, they 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 do mostly like horror movie type of stuff, and then they're gonna do a nerdy nerdy uh, channel as well. So it's great to see them joining that. Uh, uh, one of one of the guys that's heading it, he, he used to work at a comic book shop, so I think uh, he's gonna have a really good perspective on nerdy things. Oh Excellent. yeah. Yeah, I I, remember, I see. I feel like I see him at all the cons too, or I usually see him at the cons. So. Well, for New Mexico Comic Expo, he was head of security. For oh, okay. Life. There you go. That's that's why. There we go. Wow. So, all right, cool. I did fail to mention too that five percent of our profit goes to a charity of the month. We have a different charity of the month for the month, every single month. Uh, for April, it is Autism Speaks, and then for. Mayo, it's going to be national. Uh, it's the the it's Nami is what it is, but it's it's mental because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. It's related to that, so that's what we're going to be uh, donating to for next month. So uh, I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, that is. All right, cool. So talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it real. Keep it nerdy, man.